Hello, today I'd like to talk to you about sub-networking applied energistics. In most of the videos I make, I use at least two applied energistics networks interacting with each other to achieve some kind of advanced goal. Today I'd like to go over the different ways that I typically handshake two networks together. So, in our example here, this is going to be our primary network. It's got our storage items on it, um, and then a uh, assembly chamber and, and some other items that you typically have on your network. And of course you could have whatever machines or, or importing from your mining that you would you would normally have on here. So one of the first things that, that you can do is place a storage bus adjacent to an interface. So this interface, we don't have it set for anything really. Um, and the storage bus is the same, there's no special settings or filters on it. And if we come to our network here, we can see we have access to everything in the network with the interface, so in our primary network. All of these items are available on this network. So we basically create a parent of this other network, so if we had multiple networks that had different types of storage on them, we could connect them all back so that we could access everything um, by way of storage buses connected to an interface. Another thing that this is useful for, besides accessing multiple networks with storage, is for certain crafting items that you might want to do. So in cases where you have a export bus with always craft, um, if you were to ever run out of the crafting materials required, um, and you were to look at your crafting monitor, it might hang on missing materials, uh, or you might just uh, need to create several things at the same time um, using always craft export buses for your level setting. And these can interfere with each other, slow each other down, uh, by putting those on separate networks, um, or at least limiting the quantity on each network, you can allow your operation to run a little bit more smoothly. Next, I want to look at a few different setups that you can use for uh, handshaking with a separate network to do some of your advanced sorting and advanced crafting. Um, one of the earliest ways that, that I use to do this is to use an interface off your primary network adjacent to a chest with a storage bus attached to it and then export bus coming off the second network and back into the interface. What I typically use this for is if I have a crafting recipe of some kind uh, that has multiple components, I need to get them out to um, other areas. So by doing this, whenever I request a craft from my primary network, it puts all of the crafting materials into this chest, and then because of the storage bus, my second network has access to all of those. So if I have multiple export buses going out to machine, I can just leave them always on. And whenever the materials come into here, uh, those will go to the appropriate locations. And then whatever products I want to put back into my primary network, I can just program into this export bus here, and it'll put them automatically back in. Another way you can do this, um, if you're not trying to use specific quantities of items as they relate to one another, is to just put an export bus down. So if you have an export bus on your primary network pointed into a chest and an import bus on your secondary network, you can push items into this chest that will then be retrieved by your secondary network. And of course you can um, use multiple export buses and multiple import buses to ensure that you're getting the correct mix of items that you want into this chest. Uh, and again, you could use uh, any kind of level emitting or, or other setting uh, that you needed to make sure that you only put those items in there whenever you want to. Another way you can do this is by use of an interface which is set to export items. So we know that with a storage bus we always see the full inventory of the second network, but if we have an interface and we set it to uh, only export certain items, we can then pick those up with import buses on our second network. So if we want to ensure that our second network constantly had a supply of s specific items, we could use something like this. And you'll note that I put two import buses coming from my second network because I have two exported items. If we were to take an, whoop, if we were to take an import, oh my. If we were to use a single import bus uh, and try and program both items into it, it would only ever end up picking up the first item that's programmed in the import bus, uh, unless you ran out of that in your parent network. By using one import bus for each item that you're trying to export from your interface, you can ensure that they're both being picked up all the time. And of course, you could bring this a little bit further out, and you can get uh, up to five import buses on a single interface. The last way that I commonly uh, link networks together for sharing items is by using a storage bus on each network. And that makes this chest right here a piece of shared storage for both networks. I have an import bus running. 
this guy that I just set down turn off. And obviously you can see he was only getting the redstone because it's the first exported item. Uh, but with something like this, you have a shared inter or a shared piece of storage between the two networks. Both networks are treating this as part of their own internal storage. Um, so any items that are in here are considered to be members of both networks. Um, but we don't have a controller conflict because you know the um, ME controllers are are, n are not linked together through this method. So if you have a, a specific item. Uh, that you want to craft on demand in one network and maybe use for something else in a different network. Uh, putting them just into a plain vanilla or, or really any other kind of chest, uh, except for maybe ME chests. Uh, well, I guess if they have their own power. Um, but yeah, storage bus connected to a chest uh, from either network will treat this as a shared inventory. And just like the other options, you can kind of mix and match these. So you could export certain items into it um, to ensure that you're you're getting what you need in there. So the last type of subnetwork that I commonly use is a management subnetwork. So in a management subnetwork, we're not looking at the items that are on our other network. Instead, we're looking at the items that are facilitating that network. So in our assembly chamber, we might have a number of patterns, and we might have a number of disks um, in our primary network. And by connecting storage buses or import buses or export buses uh, to these blocks, we can actually uh, manipulate the items themselves so we can look at the actual disks and the actual patterns and, and do things with those and that's helpful if you uh, want to defragment your drives or you want to switch between uh, recipes in your assembly chamber um, or you know move your your drives between uh, different networks at times so there's a, a number of uh, really neat uses um, for a management network so these are just some of the ways that you can uh, link multiple networks together and some of the potential uses for them. Um, it really does magnify the power of applied energistics. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you.